Good evening, this is Sarah Al-Break and you are watching the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain TV. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today former Spanish monarch His Majesty King Juan Carlos on the occasion of his visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. This was in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier, His Highness uh, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Majesty the King reviewed with the former Spanish monarch the strong, friendly relations and cooperation between the two countries and the development witnessing in the various fields due to the joint care and concern of both sides. His Majesty the King expressed his appreciation to the efforts of King Juan Carlos and his role in enhancing the Bahraini-Spanish relations. His Majesty the King affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain is looking forward to continue work aimed at further consolidating the outstanding relations between the two countries for the interests of the two countries and their people. His Majesty the King held a dinner banquet on the honor of the King Juan Carlos, which was attended by senior members of the royal family. Earlier in the day, the former Spanish monarch, His Majesty King Juan Carlos, arrived in the kingdom and was received by the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, Sheikh Hamad bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and the governor of Muharraq. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, visited Bahrain Investors Service Center in the presence of Deputy Prime Ministers, Chairman of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, businessmen and investors. He listened to the problems faced by investors and businessmen, discussed ways to find proper solutions, ordering for them to be implemented and provide the facilities needed to ease the work at their center. His Royal Highness delegated the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and Rationalizing Expenditures to look into the reasons why investors' requests are being delayed and accepting the license application requests for investment projects that were applied for specific periods of time. He also delegated the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zaid Adayani, to implement the solutions agreed on instantly and also to improve the electronic system for license applications for investment projects to avoid certain problems. He directed uh, to reduce the number of government agencies which associate in the investment license requests and refer to specialized agencies and to reduce the conditions and procedures for the granting of licenses for investment projects. The Prime Minister stressed that government bodies should facilitate the procedures for investors as delays are not acceptable in order to support investment. He stressed for continuous follow-up by officials to always be available when needed and solve investors' problems and ensure that their applications are not being delayed. He confirmed that he personally follows investors' notes and complaints and the coordinating committee also provides follow-ups shared by the Crown Prince to help increase investment operations to boost the economy. He stressed the government's keenness to improve Bahrain's investment to cope with the international market and to meet investors' needs. As Ayan expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness's visit, lauding his continuous follow-up and wise directions to achieve progress in Bahrain in the economy and services sector. He also lauded the government's efforts to provide the suitable economic environment to attract investors to help with the progress of the country. The attendees lauded His Royal Highness's continuous support and his keenness to facilitate the necessary measures for investors.
On behalf of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, Deputy Premier and Chairman of the Higher Committee for Information and Communication on Technology, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak Al Khalifa, opened the fourth GCCE Government Award Conference and Exhibition. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak welcomed the GCC guests and conveyed to them the greetings of the Prime Minister. He said the event confirms GCC countries' keenness to keep up with ICT and exchange expertise in this field. He pointed out that the government of Bahrain has worked since 2005 on developing electronic services and has achieved many accomplishments in this field, including topping the chart of Arab e-government readiness, becoming the 18th internationally. The Deputy Premier thanked the e-government authority for organizing the event, wishing its success in enhancing Gulf joint action. Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication Kamal bin Ahmed delivered a speech thanking the Prime Minister for his directives to develop Bahrain's ICT and congratulated him on being granted ICT award by the International Telecommunications Union. He said the international community is now looking at Bahrain as an advanced country in the field of ICT thanks to the governmental support to this field and the follow-up of the Higher Committee for ICT. Kamal bin Ahmed said thanks to such support, Bahrain has been able to provide advanced e-services to the people. After that, the Deputy Premier honored the winners of the GCC e-Government Award Conference and Exhibition 2015. He also opened the exhibition held on the sidelines of the event, which includes representatives of all GCC countries consisting of 18 governmental authorities showcasing their experience and projects in the field of e-government. The concept of a regional e-government awards event was first proposed by Bahrain in 2008 and now the Kingdom is proudly playing host to the fourth edition of the GCC e-government awards conference and exhibition. The two-day event opened with an awards ceremony which showcased the great progress being made across the region. It was an idea that uh, thrown by Bahrain in 2008 when we hosted all the uh, CEOs of e-government programs in the GCC. After uh, seven years we are happy to have, uh, have the event uh, here in Bahrain and uh, we are proud that for the first time all the six UCC countries awarded and uh, get you know, some awards. I think due to the maturity that uh, we reached uh, all together, uh, the jury said it was very difficult, very tough competition. This is why they uh, recommended to give more than one award uh, in some categories. The e-government awards were conceived as a mechanism to stimulate progress in the development and delivery of government e-services due to the vast potential which stems from individuals and businesses, as well as government bodies, being able to conduct their affairs with revolutionary efficiency. I think all what we are doing in e-government is to make sure that we are realizing the digital economy in our region. Today our region has done fantastic uh, uh, work during the past decade, but still we need to do more. Bahrain is ranked as, as you know, uh, number 18 in the world and the first in the Gulf, but there's not enough. We need to do more in order to maintain our position and even, even uh, improve our uh, current position at uh, global environment. This itself affects the business environment in Bahrain. It affects our competitiveness. It affects our ability to attract FDI and foreign direct investment and uh, accordingly our uh, economic development. So it is one element of so many other things all interrelated to each other. The high-level support and regional cooperation that this event fosters are leading to coordinated progress, with neighbouring countries being able to identify major future trends more readily and learn from each other's experiences. The change in the technologies, uh, you know, the social media, it's uh, one of the things that's pressing, the big data. 
Another one, the mobile apps, the way that we started uh, developing the mobile apps, we started with single applications, then uh, multiple applications, then ministries having more than each ministry having one uh, application. Now we are trying to think from the citizen point of view and trying to consolidate all the services that from his perspective. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. Custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, received today Speaker of the Representatives Council Ahmed Al Mullah and other GCC parliamentary speakers participating in the ninth meeting of the heads of GCC parliaments and shura councils. King Salman hailed the strong Saudi Bahraini relations, lauding the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and his efforts to achieve progress. He affirmed the importance of these visits in strengthening brotherly ties, confirming that Saudi Arabia will always stand united with Bahrain in combating terrorism and rejecting foreign interference. Al-Mullah conveyed His Majesty's greetings to King Salman, lauding his efforts in contributing to the region and the Arab nations. His Highness the Deputy Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Thani, received today GCC Interior Ministers on the occasion of their 34th meeting. The ministers expressed appreciation to the Emir of Qatar's efforts in enhancing the GCC cooperation. Bahrain's Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, lauded the achievements of Sheikh Abdullah on the Gulf level for, and for overcoming security challenges, stressing the need to further strengthen cooperation to maintain security and stability. The Minister of Interior followed up on implementing the decisions of the Supreme Council of the Union with regard to the joint action. The ministers also followed up on the security network projects of the GCC Ministry of Interior and the Gulf Police, as well as investments in security-related industries. A number of security issues aimed at enhancing joint GCC security was also discussed for the purpose of ensuring security and stability. The ministers also reviewed a number of security reports forwarded to them, taking the appropriate decisions. The minister asserted on GCC determination to combat terrorism and dry out its sources for the purpose of safeguarding the Gulf society and ensuring the region's security and stability. His Highness the Deputy Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Thani, received today GCC interior ministers on the occasion of their 34th meeting. Within the framework of his visit to the UK, the Minister of Interior Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa met with the UK Minister of Security Mr John Harris. This was in the presence of Bahrain's Ambassador to the UK Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the UK Ambassador to Bahrain Mr Simon Martin, the UK Minister of Security welcomed the Minister of Interior lauding the outstanding relations between the two countries and expressing readiness to continue cooperation with Bahrain in the field of training and combating terrorism. Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah lauded the strong historic relations between Bahrain and the UK, which he said is a solid foundation to enhancing cooperation in the field of combating terrorism as well as security cooperation. The two sides agreed to form a joint work team to continue the implementation of an agreement aimed at enhancing the abilities of police staff working in the security fields, which will contribute in enhancing and enforcing security. Also discussed during the meeting were other issues related to security coordination as well as issues of common concern. Interior Minister Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa met yesterday with MP of the House of Lords in the UK, Lord Tariq Mahmoud Ahmed, the Concerned Minister in Fighting Extremism in the Interior Ministry and with Aviation Security in the Transportation Ministry. Lord Ahmed applauded the positive reform in Bahrain led by His Majesty the King and expressed appreciation for the friendly relations between Bahrain and the UK. The Interior Minister asserted that violence is not in the nature of Bahraini society and should be fought jointly. General security and safety cooperation to protect the public as part of the community partnership strategy was also discussed.
During the Interior Minister and General uh, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa's visit to the United Kingdom, he delivered a speech to the Bahrain British Friendship Society. The Interior Minister outlined uh, the incidents in Bahrain since 2011 and how law enforcement is committed to protecting security throughout the nation. He also described how Bahrain continues to face uh, foreign interference and organized terrorism and reviewed the uh, seizure of military grade shipments from Iran, including C 4 and Iranian weapons. He also discussed the ongoing anti-Bahrain propaganda by Iranian-backed media organizations. Sheikh Rashid expressed appreciation to the society members for being true friends to the kingdom and referred to his speech to the society in 2009 when he spoke of Bahrain remaining a free and open society and of how His Majesty the King's wide-ranging political and social reforms have supported that vision. Your Lordships, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it is a great pleasure to address you again tonight. And I know I speak on behalf of so many people in Bahrain when I say that we have no greater friends in the United Kingdom than the Bahrain society. The work that you have done in promoting British Bahraini friendship often goes unmentioned and is sometimes not fully acknowledged. But I want you to know that Bahrain's gratitude for your attachment to our country remains undiminished. You have been by our side when we needed you. You are what real friends should be with us in both sunshine and rain. I should have said dust. <laughs> but I mean, I mean the dust of a tank and the dust of armored vehicles during the Gulf War. But when the hand of conciliation extended by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince was not taken, the intention of those we were dealing with was clear. We had to intervene. For the sake of our nation, and for the sake of the overwhelming majority who wanted nothing to do with violent extremists. We had to contain the situation. We did not want to reach a position where innocent people, Sunnis, Shia, and other groups were confronting each other on our streets. We wanted to avoid sectarian conflict and casualties. Actually, we wanted to protect the people and save the country. I am pleased that at the end, our restraint and our discipline prevailed. Today, Bahrain is coming out of that period of its history stronger than before. The country is stable and now open for businesses. Those who unleashed violence on our country in 2011 clearly wanted to derail our path of reform. But we have not allowed them to achieve their objective. Far from retreating from our reforms, we have carried on. Let me be very clear. We are against violations of human rights, not only because they are against our law, but also because they are against everything we stand for as a decent educated Bahraini Muslim society. So there is not and will never be a culture of impunity in Bahrain. In contrast, constructive chaos of 2011 that I described earlier, recent years have seen a change in the threat to a more organized terrorism. We have intercepted military grade weapons shipments from Iran, including C-4 explosives, and found weapons made in Iran. We still face a propaganda war from Iranian-backed media organizations. We continue to see London being used as an external base for terrorist activities and incitement in Bahrain. But we need to tackle hatred. National pride must come before division. We need to maintain social harmony between all Bahrainis. 
and we need to address the worrying trend of children being used by extremists and of young people being influenced negatively through social media. I am deeply concerned with how to protect our youth, both from extremism and political violence, and from crime in general, including the use of drugs. Extremism is, of course, a growing threat to all of us, not just young people. Whether it is religious extremism, which hijacks our faith for political ends, or ideological extremism, which wants to overturn the established political order, there is no doubt that extremism is the root of today's terrorism. We don't need a crystal ball to see that the threats facing Bahrain today could very likely face other countries tomorrow. In today's integrated world, there is less room than ever for one man's terrorist genuinely to be another man's freedom fighter. And as we come to the terms with the terrible recent events in Paris, we need all of us to have a very clear idea of how we address and solve the problem of terrorism. In Bahrain, we are convinced that the evil of terrorism can only be overcome through a truly united international action that addresses all aspects of the threat, including its security, financial, social, and media dimension. Action which recognizes the urgency of the situation and which disrupts and prevents terrorist attacks at the earliest possible stage. Dear friends, with that, thank you very much for listening. I wish you a pleasant evening and look forward to many more constructive exchange between us. Shukran. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the UK State Minister for Middle East and North Africa Affairs, Mr. Tobias Elwood. This came within the framework of an official visit of Sheikh Khalid to the United Kingdom. During the meeting, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed voiced pride in the historic friendly relations linking Bahrain and the United Kingdom, the development witnessed in such relations. He affirmed the keen desire of Bahrain to further bolster cooperation with the UK and highlighted the important role carried by the United Kingdom internationally, as well as its drive to secure security and stability in the region and globally. For his part, Mr. Elwood lauded the high level of Bahrain-British relations, affirming that such relations will further enhance due to the keen desire of both sides to bolster them at various levels for the interests of the two countries and their people. During the participation of Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed with Mr. Elwood in the Bahrain-UK Friendship Committee joint meeting, which was held at the British Foreign Office today, the two sides reviewed the relations between the two countries and means of bolstering them in political, economic and security fields, as well as coordination for combating terrorism. Discussed were also the latest developments on regional and international arena. The two sides also signed an agreement for a bilateral cooperation program between Bahrain and the United Kingdom. Minister of Education Dr. Majid al naimi inspected a number of schools after the early morning heavy rain. The minister confirmed that the relevant authorities have already taken precautionary measures which significantly contributed in limiting the damage that could be caused by heavy rain. He stressed that the ministry has already started procedures to deal with a number of damages in several schools such as leaks, pools and full of partial power cuts, in addition to the collapse of a part of East Rafah Boys Secondary School. Dr. Naimi highlighted that students' attendance today was more than 95% despite the rain, while the attendance of teachers was in the normal range.
Bahrain Meteorological Directorate said thunderstorms showered various parts of the kingdom last night with 24.8 millimeters of rain recorded at Bahrain International Airport, a relatively large amount of rainfall within two hours. The directorate said unsettled weather conditions will continue until tomorrow afternoon with a chance for downpours and strong winds. The directorate urged citizens to take the necessary precautions, keep informed about latest developments and warnings issued by the directorate regarding weather conditions. Minister of Energy Dr. Abdel Hussein bin Ali Mirza opened today the Middle East Heavy Oil Congress. The minister confirmed the growing importance of heavy oil in the oil industry of the Middle East, highlighting the necessity to develop oil inventories and review the latest exploration and production technology to achieve the highest level of performance while protecting the environment. Dr. Mirza said the Middle East Heavy Oil Congress is an important regional gathering to discuss this industry. The event promises to provide deep insight on the commercial, regulatory and technical issues concerning the Middle East heavy oil industry and the latest technological advancements made in exploration and production. It is also considered an ideal platform for oil and gas professionals to network with key decision makers and hear from leading dignitaries to get a balanced perspective about the industry. Minister of Information and Shura and Representatives Council Affairs Isa Al Hamadi affirmed further coordination with ministries and government authorities to reduce the recurrent expenditures being allocated for advertisements, printing, subscriptions, and stationery under the government policy to control and rationalize public spending. He pointed out that the task force would reach out to all ministries and government departments to collect and study important documents to come out with recommendations for reducing recurrent expenditure, adding that the measure would help protect public resources, maintain financial stability, and ensure efficient service performance. He directed the task force said to study the government's programs and measures to achieve economic efficiency and productivity despite low oil prices. Al Hamadi affirmed that discussing most viable solutions to reduce recurrent expenditure and will send the final report to the coordinating committee chaired by the Crown Prince on December 1st.